So um, I guess our next thing then is the new six month sub mount. Because for some reason, sauce. that's where my energy is taking me. <laughs> and as you say, I choose you, Articuno. To, yeah, it kind of looks like a legendary bird from Pokemon. Uh, now, here's what I'm going to say first. Because I, I, it was funny. Of all the people to be roasted for being critical at Blizzard, mm. I didn't think it would be Mr. GM. <laughs> oh, yeah. Poor man. Poor man did a very reasonable tweet. And, uh, you know, I think a bunch of people purposefully missed his point in order to, you know get a little bit of a, a swing in at him, which I think was a bit unfair. That's how the internet works. That is. It's how Twitter works, yeah. So, yeah. right, this is the six-month mount. I have it. It's a store mount. I own it. Did I buy it? Nice Technically, one. but only because I'm on a six-month sub. So, you know, it's the most economical way. And obviously, uh, you know, if, if, if anyone's going to get value out of being subscribed to World of Warcraft, mm -hmm. it's us. Yeah, I mean, you know, even yeah. if it is just logging in to check some lore books, logging in to get a crispy shot, stuff like that. I mean, we're always going to be sub to WoW here. That's just how it is. Um, so, yeah, for, for this mount, the, the first thing I want to talk about is... Oh, man, there's actually numerous things I want to talk about here because oh, I find this store mount stuff so, so interesting. Actually, if you go down there, Dakor has embedded a little video for us. And if you just play that, because it's, it's a nice little video, actually, because uh, I saw this uh, effect, and I think it was Asmund's stream. Yeah, bam, look at that mount special. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's such a cool mount. Uh, you know, for me, it's great, because, yeah, I, I love dinosaurs, and, you know, what are birds? Birds are fucking mm. dinosaurs, dudes. That's why birds are... Birds are metal, fuck. I love them. Birds are awesome. Mm. Um, anyway, anyway, it's time to stop simping for, uh, the, for the avians. Um, um, Notion's you know, the, behaving well. Fun. Yeah, Notion is behaving well. So but I'm going to continue with the story. So, <laughs> this is a gorgeous mount. It uh, is. Is this a new rig? I can't exactly... Uh, is it a new rig? I, see, I, I feel like... Cause I, I want to actually hop in and defend Mr. GM a little bit from some of the people who are roasting him. Because mm. I think some of those people, uh, you know, maybe don't understand 3D workflows. Yeah. Uh, and so whenever people talk about, you know, the store mounts having, oh, the best animations, the best that, the best that. What well, they maybe... Uh, you know, what they're going to is that these are the mounts that get the most unique bespoke work. Now, if you as an individual player prefer a mount that you just get in the game, great, I'm happy you're happy. But that's also literally not the point mm. whenever Mr. GM makes that tweet, right? And maybe we should bring up Mr. GM's tweet. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it'll be there on his Twitter. Um, All right. But, you know, it's... The, the, so, okay. You want to do a new mount in a, in a game like World of Warcraft. Well, the first thing, or not the first thing, what, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make the mount. So you're going to need to make the model for the mount. Okay? But then, but then, it's like, okay, well, I've made a 3D model, but what good is that if it doesn't move? How do you make a model move? Oh, you just animate it, right? No. No, you don't animate it, because how do you animate it if it's just a model? You need to rig it. Now, rigging is, uh, you know, rigging is basically, the, I think the easiest way to explain it is it's giving it its skeleton. And, you know, there's, there's something called inverse kinematics. You know, give it a quick Google. It's actually very, it's very, you know, it sounds like a big word, but as soon as you see a quick little diagram of like IK handles and, uh, you know, the IK constraints, you'll understand what it is. It's basically, you know, just being like, we got this bone, we got this bone, here's like their movement range, and just doing a little bit of stuff to give the animators the, uh, the control, the tools. Because then what happens is the animator opens up uh, this modeled and rigged and textured mount, and then they take it through the animation pipeline. So, uh, you know, that is them doing all of the keyframes, all of that. So they are using the controls that are made by the rigger in order to animate the mount. And then that is how you actually get a mount. So making a new 3D asset is actually really fucking expensive because you need to make the model, you need to make the rig, you need to texture the model, and you then, of course, need to animate it with animation being very expensive. Now, in World of Warcraft and in many games, uh, you know, what people will do is they will reuse rigs. Because if two models are vaguely similar to each other, you know, let's say you've got two bipeds or, you know, some two quadrupeds who... Yeah, you can basically use the same rig for, you know, the most models or whatever. Um, you know, that's how you get model swaps and Tactra swaps that still kind of use, like, the same rigs. Uh, I mean, say, Volpera and Goblins. Mm. I believe they are sharing rigs. Are they really? 
I think they're sharing rigs with you know, obviously custom animation sets and stuff. Yeah. Or at least that's what I remember from the days of you know all the uh, BFA data mining. Maybe. Um, so the overall point here, uh, and this is I explain this from the the technical side just to help people understand what is actually being talked about and how it's important to divorce this from your own subjective experience of amount because your own subjective experience could be that another totally different amount is way way cooler than the new store mount. So. Um, Storm out shilling? This is not storm out shilling, my dude. This is explaining how uh, how 3D models are made. Uh, and it's definitely not going to turn into a shill because <laughs> the issue many people seem to have, and I, I think I agree too, is the mounts that have got seemingly the unique models, the unique rigs, and the most time put into their animation kits, those very often are the storm mounts. The uh, the tree mount that we got as like a free promo thing stands out as a sort of a point of difference. Yeah. But you know, if you want a, a color changing mount, you've got to get the Fade Dragon from the store. You've got to mm-hmm. get the was the Mystic Rune Saber that changes color or whatever. No, it wasn't the, the Luminous Star Seeker. The Luminous Star Seeker. Yeah. Yep. So that's like cool new and different things, but they only are there for a store mount, and every single store mount can fly and walk now there's many people who would or you know they can fly and they can do ground now there's many people who maybe have uh, you know even in the store mounts they don't always make sense when they can do that you know just have a mount you know sometimes you just have a horse that can literally walk in the air but whatever it's an animal we don't care about that yeah I mean, it's because it's a cool horse and it's very useful and then for a lot of people they're like well what about the new moss worn charger in the new patch oh it would have been cool to have used that everywhere, but, and and if this was a store mount, it would be able to fly, but because it's an in-game mount, it can't fly, and therefore, it does not feel uh, like the in-game obtainable mounts are as good as the store obtainable mounts. And that is basically the rub. So there's a bunch of people, and you know I don't want to get into any specifics of any, you know, the you know, certain names of people who went against them, but I just noticed a bunch. Um, so, you know, what, what Mr. GM talking about there is just the stuff that gets the most unique pizzazz often feels yeah. like it is very story stuff. And yeah. then that feels kind of bad. Mm. And that's basically, uh, you know, that's basically what I think cuts to the root of the ongoing discussion that happens. You know, it's perfectly on a timetable, man. It's like every six months, yeah. uh, we have a little talk about Stormouts again. So I'm now sort of thinking like, okay, you know, I, we, I've done this spiel about the, you know, the, the sort of 3D pipeline in game dev. Uh, I don't know. What uh, what little lesson or what little uh, bit am I going to have for the next six months time when there's a new mount that I've got to talk about? I'm not really that I sure. I think at that point, it'd just be a, a, a resigned sigh. Just, yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> this, this how it is. Yeah, so you know it's it's funny with um, you know it's funny with that. And as for the mount itself, I fucking love it. And it's that really That's weird sort of... thing where I'm I'm in this like odd position because I would I would not buy this for twenty five United States dollars hmm. uh, because I can't. I'm in the wrong region. But I wouldn't buy it for great was it GBP Great British pounds? Yes, I would not purchase it for GBP either or any other currency. I wouldn't buy it straight from the store. But I just have it already as a part of my subscription. So there's a bit of me that's just kind of thinking like, ah, I'm not going to feel like a scumbag if I use this mount in game because everyone has the damn thing anyway. Yeah. And I did not pay for, I mean, I literally did. This is my wow sub, but I didn't buy it from the store a la carte. Mm-hmm. You know, I got as a part of the set menu, just the six on sub. So, you know, I'm actually going to feel pretty okay using this in game and I don't really see it as supporting a store mount. And that's, I guess, the really smart thing about how Blizzard frames these mounts now. Yeah, where it doesn't feel like that overt per- uh, purchase, yeah. even though I don't really support this that much. And, you know, I think it would be way better if, okay, I'm, I'm going to, I've got two more points. Yep. Really feel, I'm going to, man, I'm going to go through like another two years of uh, storm out spiels. I'm going to be really screwed next January when another one comes out. But anyway, mm. um, this is a cool looking dude. And it does have, oh man, where's its flavor text? <laughs> Where is its flavor text? Because there is, there is, mm. yes, here it is. Is it in this one? It's not quite, yeah. No. It's not quite certain, quite certain why Sapphire Sky Blazers flocked to Azeroth, but what's known for sure is they burn brighter and hotter than any avian to ever soar the skies. 
this brilliant bird will be yours, yeah, immediately, whatever. So, this is Mystery Bird. Mystery Bird, where's it came from? Now, now. I know where it's come from, don't worry. Look, <laughs> look for the Silverian Dreamer. Yep. Because that came out during BFA. At a time when we did not really know what a Ardenweald is, or what a Night Fae is, right? Yeah. Um, actually, let's go for the Silvarian Dreamer. What's its uh, flavor text? I couldn't tell you. So if I, I go no Silvarian Dreamer, and I'll just go for Blizzard Store. Mm -hmm. Because my point is, and this is what got me about the Fae Dragon, because the Fae Dragon was Blizzard at the end of Mop actually yeah. overtly selling us a piece of Warlords of Draenor content. Yep. I remember doing a big rant video at the time. Um, okay, I found the website, but it's in Russian. So I guess... Nice, you've done that well. You asked about that. Um, so my point there was, you know, I remember, of course, in the Mist of Padari expansion, the big cool new mount from that was uh, yeah. obviously the Cloud Serpents. And, you know, you did the, the Cloud Serpent reputation where you got to learn about the Serpent Riders and you got to ride them about. And then you really felt like you earned that Serpent at the end. Mm. And, you know, there's this bit in Shadow Moon Valley called the Dracorium. And I kind of thought, like, well, why is there not a reputation in the Dracorium where we befriend the locals and we learn how to master their mounts? And, but I that wonder... didn't happen. And I believe there was a Rylak as well that was treated in a similar fashion. Mm, would make sense, yeah. Uh, so, okay, what is this? Uh, an artist in the magical city of Dalaran fell asleep on her brush and dreamed of painting a beautiful feather dragon. Her artwork leapt from the page, and when she awoke, she found the Silvarian Dreamer sleeping gently beside her. Now, that is basically what we call a lie, because uh, if you look at the Silvarian Dreamer, and then there's, what's the wolf mount? There's a, uh, there's a wolf store mount as well that also we know is from Ardenweald because the new Ardenweald Covenant mount is, the, it's like the same. Yeah, I don't know, but I mean, obviously, I mean, dreaming, dreaming, you know, maybe the mage was about to die and had an emerald dream slash The Vulpine Familiar. Oh, yes, the Vulpine, yeah. The Vulpine Familiar, I forget where, when it came out, but it says here, fiercely intelligent and insatiably curious, this species of fox has traveled... The great dark beyond to yeah. seek companionship of the greatest heroes of Azeroth. They are born daredevils, and any one of them would be you know, a great uh, sort of companion to your adventure. Now, the thing is, if you look at the this fox, and then you look at the new Ardenweald, or, or, or Night Fae, um, yeah, you know, mount that you get uh, for the Covenant campaign, and it's like the same kit. So this stuff all feels like it should naturally be in Ardenweald, but it's like it's been ripped off from, you know, ripped out of the game and put in the store. Yeah. Or, you know, the Steam Scale Incinerator. That should have been in Mechagon as yeah. a thing to earn. Yeah, and the lore is like, the lore is always so non-specific that it's kind of like hinting. You can connect the dots uh, after the fact. Yeah. But and you, can, you can't look at it and go, oh, well, I know, like, you know, they couldn't say this is, you know, <laughs> they couldn't have had the, the Silverian Dreamer be, this is like, you know, the mage dreamt of death and beyond death's veil lay this creature. Yeah, they couldn't do it, that. It give it up, Because we just go... Mm, well, I wonder what that is. Yeah, so basically the thing that I'm saying here is another reason why these cannot feel good, maybe it's something Mr. GM is feeling when he made his tweet, is, you know, this feels like it, you know, maybe in the next expansion, we'll be like, oh, so that's where the Sapphire Sky Blazer came from. Yeah. And it now feels wrong that that was sold to us as a mount. Yep. And that is basically the point. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, imagine in the Burning Crusade, if the Netherwing was on the store and yeah. it was not a reputation mount, because that is essentially what has happened. Yeah. Uh, and this is also happening at a time where if you do look, you know, there's 45 new mounts in this uh, in this patch, I believe, and it's very yeah. much only 45 because of extreme amounts of recolors, including recolors of 9.0 mounts. Hmm. I mean, goddamn! I look at, I remember showing you the rune stags that I have, and it's like yeah. this rune stag <laughs> looks the exact same as that rune stag, just that it's a slightly different tint on the leaf, and you can barely tell them apart. And it's just like, man, that's not two mounts. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's one. That's just you know, this time the the horse woke up and decided to put on that color of the hair dye. Yeah, it's kind of the thing where they did that really well with the class mounts in Legion, yeah. where you you're in the class mount, and then it's like, oh, here's the other colors to buy if you want. And they counted as multiple months, but it was basically just, you know, what flavor of, like, for example, Paladin. Do you want to go, go for, like, the purple crystal flavor? Do you want to go for the human, like, blue and gold flavor? Or do you want to be, like, a, the, the Blood Elf, like, silver and red kind? Yeah. And it was just pure, you know, spend a token amount of tokens, and there you go. 
yeah, so that that's basically the situation with this. Um, There's actually one last little thing. I have another point. I don't know. There's you're, one you're last on. little thing that I want to bring up uh, that might actually be kind of relevant hmm. because John uh, is a mad lad for looking at anything on Woda Tools whenever new oh, files are added. Yes, this is awesome. So he looked at the textures. I was like, that metal texture looks interesting. Where have I seen it before? And I think this is... I can't bring it up because it's on the uh, company Slack and yeah, I don't want yeah. to... Don't want to share any details or dox anybody, but he's literally there is an ingot in that's either in Corthia. I think that's in Corthia. It might be in Tazavish. Uh, Corthia. No, I was is screwed. It? It's in the new patch. Anyway. Yeah, but the same metal ingot has the same texture as the actual uh, mounts, like metallic bits, like the barding on it. So that is a uh, that is a big hint of uh, intelligent-ish asset reuse that could be hinting at wherever these are from well it shows that this is a mount the style of which does mesh with something in the game yeah it just isn't really fully in the game yet mm -hmm. because maybe it, this mount is going to make complete sense when we see the next expansion yeah almost because uh, right, i mean if you saw the sylvarian dreamer and you somehow thought oh yeah this is obviously uh you know a mount from the realm of death but you know the life part of the realm of death you'd be totally bang on because it turned out that's where it feels like it's yeah. from um so yeah look interesting stuff there there is another side to this too there's the fire plume <laughs> phoenix there's two of them you get two store mounts except you don't get this one you get that from another point later yeah, on maybe. And, and it says source promotions so, yeah, like, hmm. so it's going to be really awkward because what uh promotion is this from giving away a recolor of a store mount that won't feel good what could it be then uh another game collector's edition maybe it could Would that be make that? sense for like it... d2r but they already have pre-orders open for that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Mm. I genuinely don't know. Uh, it's the sort of thing, it's a store mount, so they can't give you a recolor of a store mount in-game. They haven't done that before, because if they yeah. did do that, it would devalue the store mount. Yeah, for um, sure. So they're not going to do that. This is from a promotion, we just have no idea what. I mean, maybe it's from a Hearthstone expansion or something like that. It's kind of hard to say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Hmm. That's it. Six months has passed. The usual thing has happened. Yeah. What a surprise. Not no, really no a surprise. Here. We're very used to this. So, yeah. uh, you know, that's why instead of being all like, oh, store rounds, I'm very angry. Uh, I just sort of decided, well, just explain what's going on with it. Um, mm. Now, of course, it is a store mount. If you're not sub for six months, you can just earn a bunch of gold in game and purchase the thing. So you can get this purely through gameplay. Yeah, it's just that obviously somebody will have bought a token, and yes. that means that Blizzard will get the whatever you know dollar premium of all of the tokens, depending on how much money you end up having to convert into the Battle Donut currency because of yeah how token works. So there's that bit too. And you know, it, it is yeah. definitely good mm. that you can get this via your in-game effort. Um, I feel bad for the guy who, you know, uh, sits there, grinds, you know, mo loads and loads of gold for this. Uh, how much gold, how much um, BNAP balance does a token transfer into? 15 quid? I think it's 15 quid for, you, you buy the token for 17. I think that's, uh, turns into, ah, no, gotcha. hang on. No, uh, cause, oh, yeah, no, cause yeah, it's you a, can it's redeem it for 30 days or, oh yeah, here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can purchase WoW token from the shop for real money and sell it for gold, or you can purchase a token from the auction house and redeem it for 30 days of game time, or 10 quid. Oh, 10 quid. So you would need three tokens to buy that a la carte. Or two tokens? Two, because it's 19 quid. Oh, yeah, so you need two tokens to buy that a la carte, yeah. which will mean the Blizzard will make 10 bucks off that because yep. of the token premium. Yep. Um, um, but I do feel bad for the person who just, like, goes, grinds, like, 500k mm. to get this, because that's, like, roughly what the token price is. Uh, 560k okay. as of yeah. earlier this week so they go, EU. They make 560k, they get their mount, they actually worked for it in-game, uh, and some motherfucker spits on them. <laughs> Well, I mean... That is how it is, social dynamics and yeah. stuff. Did they earn it in-game? Do you earn 560k reasonably in-game? Or are you are you playing are you playing TSM or boosting for that gold? Like, I suppose there are people who see people using TSM and then would probably want to slash spit them anyway. I think TSM's really fucking cool. I think it's cool. I just... I think it's so cool. You know, back in the yeah. day, I'd be using TSM. I'd be browsing Undermine Journal. I'd be, like, totally in there reading just my two uh, copper.com and all the gold blogs. And, oh, what a... I love making gold and wow. And wad professions happened. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah there, there we go, everyone. That's well, the crack with a six-month sub mount. Mm.